All right, so here is the uh, quick look at the AW TV show Hangman and Brian Danielson. This match was great. Excellent match. I'm not sure if it was better than the uh, first match that they had. Some people say that it was. Uh, to me, it was like there were two commercial breaks during the match, and, you know, it kind of... I will say this. It was the fastest 30-minute match I ever saw. That was also because it was only 22 minutes on television. But still, they had a, an excellent match, and uh, this was one of those matches that Vinny and I talk about every now and then. They do these uh, sometimes in Japan where, you know, in America it's always near fall, near fall, back forth, back forth, back forth, back forth, counter, win. Uh, sometimes you'll see the match in Japan where it's like, uh, this guy's the winner. <laughs> he hits the guy with like 10 straight moves and then pins him. Uh, that's what they did here. I mean, Hangman, at the end, Danielson went for this deal, and Hangman... Uh, power bombed him. He hit him with the ground and pound, and then he just hit him with his move and pinned him. I mean, he was the better man, no question about it here. And uh, no John Moxley, no follow up there. And but the most important thing to awesome. me coming out of that too was he kicked out of Danielson's knee, but it still only took one lariat, you know, one buckshot lariat to pin Danielson, and that's important, especially when you got a young champion who, again, you're you're establishing this guy as being dangerous. So when that that buckshot doesn't work, now you've got some drama to the match. So, Sean Dean beat MJF by disqualification. I think on television this was the first ever disqualification in a one on one one fall singles match when CM Punk ran in and gave Sean Dean the uh, GTS and. Bro, it was awesome, because when you never do DQs, a DQ can be a storytelling device. And the storytelling device is, at the beginning of the year, all of the records start over at zero. MJF wants to be the champion, but you have to have a good record to become the number one contender. Well, because of CM Punk, MJF is now zero and one. That's his record. He's got a losing record. And Punk told him, this happens every week until you face me. And so uh, MGF refused to face him, but did say next week it'll be CM Punk and Wardlow. So they're doing the slow build there. We had a Jericho segment with 2.0 setting up a six-man on Rampage, not involving Jericho, but uh, without giving spoilers about who won, Jericho does get involved after that match. So it's a it's a slow build to whatever they're doing with Jericho and Eddie Kingston Wardlow killed Antonio Zambrano. We had Jade Cargill beating Ruby Soho to win the title. Bad match. <laughs> second bad match in a row for Jade Cargill, which also is the second match in a row where they've had her go long live on national television. Yeah. Because you know, as I noted on the Dave show, this is not hard. If you want her to be champion, fine. But on national television, she's Goldberg. If you want her to work longer matches to learn, which you should, on dark and elevation, knock yourselves out. But on national television, it needs to be in there, boom, 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 slaughtering everybody. I realize that there is an expectation for great wrestling, but you can have a Goldberg. You can have one person who is Goldberg. And if you want Jade Cargill to be champion, she can do a competent three-minute squash match. But it's not working doing these long live matches on television. I don't have a problem with her as champion, but get in and get out. Yes, yes. I like what Beer Money said here of Jade Berg. There's a place for this. I like Jade. I like the fact that they went in this direction with her. But like you mentioned, I thought they were doing a lot of this with Ruby's shoulder to, to give an, an out to have a short match. And, and they didn't end up doing that. And they're not, they're not going to help her with this. And that's flat out. <coughs> you all right, brother? I swallowed saliva. You ever done that? It sucks. Water is much better. Malachi Black beat Brian Pillman Jr. They had a really weird, they had another weird thing afterwards where every time the lights go out, I don't know if they need like a new guy that turns the lights on and off. I wonder how much that guy makes. If he makes <laughs> six figures job. to switch that light on and off, I mean, maybe I will actually <laughs> try and get a job with AEW. But anyway, uh, he switched the lights off and then they came back on and like, you know, nothing happened. They just no Jeff Jarrett. They switched places. <laughs> By the way, in the uh, the main event, Jurassic Express beating the Lucha Bros. We talked about this earlier. Injury to Phoenix. Lucha, uh, Jurassic Express won. Uh, there was a moment where 
uh, the Jurassic or the Lucha Brothers were going for their finish and the lights turned out and they came back on and nothing had happened. So someone's coming. And uh, I had a lot of people wondering who that was. We'll talk about it after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, I know how much everyone loves change. If you head to WrestlingObserver.com, F4WOnline.com. Hey, it's our newly designed website, everybody. Launched and ready to go. So head up there and check it out, bros. F4WOnline.com, WrestlingObserver.com. Looks pretty good on my phone, too. Look at that. Holy smokes. Hold on wow. here. Let me click on just a random link here. Like, No, don't do big, that. I got to talk about the news. No, Big Audio Nightmare. Wrestle, okay, uh, fine. Go ahead. All right. Listen to the Big Audio Nightmare. Um, yeah, so uh, very quickly, uh, the lights went out, and everybody's thinking that uh, it's Brody King, which it probably is. It may very well be. Uh, the fact that it happened during the Lucha Brothers mask or match, I'm just thinking about like, uh, you know, what if they got Bandito, and uh, you know, would he be a ally or a rival? I mean, Ooh. that would be awesome. But uh, I had other people thinking that maybe he was supposed to debut last night, but because of the injury, he didn't. I don't know, but I don't think that was going to happen because they were panning around to all of the wrestlers at the end. And uh, Malachi Black was way up in a seat somewhere. So I would think that if 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 Brody was going to debut, he would have debuted with Malachi. And given that Malachi was like a thousand miles away in a seat, I don't think that's what they were going to do. But I presume he's debuting very, very soon. And uh, if you've not seen Brody King, he's awesome. Yeah, he is. And yes, he's going to he have is. some awesome matches. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts? this match was was uh, two and three-quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey! Look at that, holy hey. mother of God, look what we've done here. You broke a leg, is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibula. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Helsen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Helsen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Helsen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.